Hi everyone and welcome to another Bowls Australia Zoom catch up and uh, this time today we're joined by Bowls Australia's Athlete Wellbeing and Engagement Manager and a key member of the BCIB Australian Jackaroos team and Megan Fritch. How are you Megan? Hi Clive, I'm good. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, I, I imagine you've been very, very busy in, a, in tough times at the moment. Um, take us through your role with the Jackaroos. Yeah, so I commenced my role with the Jackaroos High Performance Squad back in late 2018. Um, it's a role that's funded by the Australian Institute of Sport, Athlete Wellbeing and Engagement um, area. Um, and basically, I work with the high performance management team, but I really drive the athlete wellbeing engagement framework that we're building for Bowls Australia. So within that framework, one of my key roles is to really support and guide our players within the Australian Jackaroos squads um, in terms of their career and education goals, um, we focus a lot on community engagement. Um, I look at their prof professional and personal development goals. Um, we have a mental health um, focus as well because that's extremely important in this day and age um, with a significant amount of pressures that are involved in elite high performance sport. Um, and yeah, really just help guide and support those players and provide support to the high performance management team as well. So yeah, so that's really my role. So obviously in a, a coronavirus world, things have looked a little different over the last couple of months. We know that some of the athletes would have been looking forward to events and so forth, but they instead, they've been cooped up at home, haven't been able to get out in the green. And how's your role evolved around that? Yeah, look, I think initially it was quite a shock for everyone, um, for staff and players. And really we, we had a lot of uncertainty. So um, I guess initially within that first couple of weeks, it was really just providing platforms for the players to be able to um, talk about how they're feeling, um, talk about the uncertainty and talk about the fact that it was out of our control and what were some strategies that we could, as staff and players, put in place to help us manage, manage that. Um, and then over the course of, um, as we sort of got into um, that self-isolation period, it was then, okay, well, what could we actually continue to do in a safe and healthy way that would a keep us still physically fit mentally fit in terms of still preparing for what was coming um, up in later in the year um, but also an opportunity to take on some different things you know think about different activities that they may not have had time to do before because of their hectic bowl schedules a lot really felt that it was great to have the time with family um, because they are traveling a significant amount of time across you know their calendars and stuff that they really took that time to reconnect with people that they ne not necessarily had time to do. Um, we had some players that um, took the opportunity to do a little bit of study. Again, you know there's a bit of free time um, or a bit of different time that they could look at that kind of stuff. So we we did um, encourage them to I guess take up, say different activities um, to still keep everything mentally and physically fit and, and their well-being their well-being was all part of this so yeah, yeah. I, I guess i guess that beats sitting in front of the telly and uh, just watching telly although that's a little bit part of it isn't it i noticed uh, i noticed watching netflix was on one of the uh, one of the reports i saw yeah it is you know like i said before you know these guys are flat out their calendar calendars are back to back and um which is great they love it but i still think you know it was still important for them to have some downtime and they don't necessarily get that they don't get that opportunity just to sit and maybe finish a whole series in on netflix and that's okay that's not a major concern you know if, if it was happening every day consistently for say six months well yes that's a concern but we knew that there was potentially an end to this. So, you know, some of those activities were quite healthy. So how's the team been staying engaged with one another? We know they're a close team. We know that they, uh, they enjoy, you know, the face-to-face -face and, and on the green together. What's been happening in terms of, uh, you know, the technology ideas and so forth in terms of keeping in touch? 
Yeah, so basically we started up a weekly uh, sort of Zoom teleconference with our whole high performance squad. So that included our Australian Jackaroos squad, um, our para sports squad and our emerging Jackaroos and obviously our high performance management team. We wanted everyone on the call because we felt that that was a, a really um, good connection for our players because we weren't seeing each other like we would normally. Um, and it was also a platform where if they did have a worry or a concern or wanted to know where they could get information, particularly about the information that was coming out from government, um, we had that opportunity to debrief some of those things. And then as our weeks progressed, um, Steve and Gary set up um, our di discipline uh, teleconference as well. So then we sort of split off. Um, they had the chance to to talk about certain things that were specific to each of those disciplines, but we still maintained our whole squad teleconference. And we're still continuing that now. Um, we've gone to fortnightly because obviously restrictions are starting to be lifted. We're starting to see a little bit more normality taking place. So we've pushed that out to fortnightly. And it's, it's a really good, um, I guess, um, engagement piece. You know, we're, we're getting some good um, discussions happening and things that we would probably never discuss, you know, just created that opportunity to. So, yeah. I'm sure when you've got Steve Glasson leading the charge, there's yeah. always things that you wouldn't have thought you would have discussed that come oh, up. Oh, no. Yeah, there's some funny ones that come out. <laughs> <laughs> What about the physical activity side of things? So we talked about the different activities and the personal development and career paths and things like that. What about the, the physical fitness and so forth at the moment when you can't get out there and just, you know, can't go to the gym, can't go, yeah. you know, couldn't get out in the greens. What's the team been doing in that space? Yeah, so initially, um, again, when it was really uncertain right at the beginning and, and the lockdowns or the restrictions were really put in place, um, Steve and Gary um, and the high performance management team, we decided that it was a good opportunity probably for players just to take a step back. Um, you know, being, I guess, worried about whether I was able to train or get out on the green or any, that was just another added, um, I guess, pressure um, and challenge for them. So we said, well, have, let's take a few weeks where you can have a bit of a break. Again, their calendars are so full that this was an opportunity for them to recharge, really recharge physically and obviously mentally and their well-being. So um, basically uh, we've sort of now just started to reintroduce um, some fitness plans and activities um, as, as restrictions slowly get lifted. Um, obviously we still encouraged you know, some physical activity each day because that's really good for your well-being. Don't sit in, in front of screens all day. Get outside if you can for a 30 minute, an hour walk, take the dog for a walk, et cetera. So that was still in play, but now we are starting to ramp it up a, a bit more too, now that we can. It's interesting. That's good advice for everyone really, isn't it? To get out and get your 30 minutes of exercise, whether it's on the bike or going for a walk. Yeah, and I think it was really important to, as our Australian Jackaroos squads are quite well, recognised as leaders within our sport, um, it was really important and we stressed to them too that we have to be um, abiding by the state um, restrictions and we have to be showing people what to do. Um, you know, so that was really, that was a key message from us too, that, you know, let's really do the right thing because we all want to get back as quickly as we can. And so we, we really stressed to them that they were role models and, and leaders within, within the sport. Speaking of that leadership, they, the, the Jackaroos team, we've seen them take some leadership in some community engagement activities as well. The, the Anzac Day commemorations is one that springs to mind. Yeah, so obviously, like I said before, as part of my role, um, community engagement is one of our key focus areas. Um, we, I really believe in community engagement in the fact that it, for some people it gives a really strong purpose, you know, in that sense of giving back and um, I guess creating more of that holistic picture for someone. Um, we're fortunate that the Australian Institute of Sport um, had a, several campaigns national campaigns that they were really getting behind. And so we we supported them and one of them being um, Anzac Day, the light up the dawn, hashtag light up the dawn. 
And so we had 12 of our high performance squad members that were part of that campaign where um, like most people got up at 6 a.m., lit the candle, they wore their Australian jackaroos, um, polos and representative gear and took a photo and then that was part of the campaign that the AIS was driving. And again, it just shows how important, I guess, they are in our community in terms of being leaders and, and really good role models. And of course, of course, the, the mental health aspect of coronavirus and people being cooped up and so forth. We've had some movement there as well, haven't we, with uh, a couple of our, uh, our wonderful uh, jackaroos nominated as, as Lifeline custodians. Yeah, so this is another really fantastic initiative that the AIS is driving as well. This is in its second year, the Lifeline Community Custodians Program, and we're fortunate to have two two of our, well, one is our current jackaroos, so that's um, Natasha Van Elf, and then the other one is obviously uh, just retired, which is Cara Murphy. Um, but, you know, those two are part of this program, which really raises the awareness of mental health and the support that is available out there for people within the community and also elite athletes. So that's another um, big driver is that we want to be able to, I guess, decrease the stigma that is still associated with mental health and say that it is okay to reach out and get support. And these two champions um, are out there sort of waving the flag, not only for Bowls Australia, but for our whole um, high performance sporting community. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, yeah. two, two greater people we couldn't have, uh, have chosen, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, it's also, uh, there's a couple of other things going on, isn't there? It's National Val Vol I'll try that again, <laughs> National Volunteers Week and uh, National Careers Week as well. Yeah, so that's all happening this week. Um, for National Volunteers Week, again, we're part of a campaign that the Australian Institute of Sport is driving. Um, obviously, our sport bowls is, you know, the backbone of our sport are our volunteers. And um, this is an opportunity for us, for our Australian Jackaroos and for all high performance elite athletes to be able to say thank you to our volunteers and all the work that they do to help drive and promote and just get competition happening out there on the greens. And so we have um, 19 of our high performance squad members who are part of this campaign. And I don't wanna to give too much away because there's some special elements to, to this campaign where they've been able to nominate a very special volunteer um, per athlete. So um, some people might get a really lovely surprise in terms of being nominated as someone who has been very special to one of our jackaroos and they've noticed the work that they've put in behind the scenes. Wow, that is fantastic. You're not going to give anything away though. No, so that's National Volunteers Week. So some of that <laughs> will be coming out over the next couple of days. Um, and then we have National Careers Week. And again, really important for us to be able to promote that because obviously career and education is another element to my role and making sure and helping athletes, um, I guess, to really understand that it is important to try and build a career alongside your sporting career because you never know when that elite sporting career might finish. Um, touch wood, it, it, it lasts for many, many years. And, and the fortunate thing for bowls is that you can play for consecutive years, which is excellent. Um, but it might come a time where some of our jackaroos say that's enough for international representation or, you know, there's other things that force them out of the sport. So it's really important that they have um, another, I guess, focus, um, qualifications, uh, different avenues where they can step into and make a very seamless um, transition. So National Careers Week, really important. And I put some information on our Bowls Australia website um, today. And basically it's just um, promoting some free webinars that are available for all people in our community. It's not just elite athletes. There's some free sessions out there. Um, you know, talking about some of the industries that are starting to really boom and that will boom because of this COVID pandemic, you know, and, and it's a great opportunity to start looking, you know, whether there's a different career out there for you. If you've got a, 
um, a student who's coming into year 12 and you know starting to think well what am I going to do next these webinars are just great to be able to get that type of information and they're all free so if I can if I can do one thing I can encourage everyone to jump on the National Careers website our National Careers Week website and um, have a look at that there you go. So that's uh, bowls.com.au. That's the Bowls Australia website. We can go and yeah. get all of that information. As you say, one thing we tend to have on our hands at the moment is a bit of time yeah. to uh, to think about these things. And I guess that's that's. I wanted to touch on that briefly with the with the Jackaroos as well. Their individual performance plans. I guess when things are rolling along and there's lots of lots of things happening, uh, it, it can this sort of opportunity can give them a chance to just sort of take stock. Mm. and say, well, where am I? Where do I want to be? And, and think about those career options as well. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's what we, how we have sort of approached this time, um, not only just for them to be, have a bit of a, a relax and a refresh and an opportunity to reflect. Um, so over these past couple of weeks, uh, the high performance management team have started to work with each player and have a look at their individual performance plans. So, you know, their key target um, events, some technical and tactical goals, physical and nutrition goals, and start to plan for what's coming up. We know things are going to get back up and running. And so we want to be on the front foot. Um, our players want to know sort of what they're striving for, what they're trying to achieve. And then in my space, it is actually having to think about, well, what, what are the things I know I've had time now and I know I'll get busy again, but what is it that I can keep going on with? You know, can I, can I balance and manage some extra study while I'm still playing? Or is this an opportunity to rethink the career that I'm sort of in at the moment while I'm playing bowls? Can I, you know, have a look at what my options are? You know, do I need to refresh my resume? Do I need to do, get some job readiness skills? So they're the things that we start to, to put in place and plan. And then, and then we check in with them on those plans as we move throughout the year. And things will change. As our stages in life change, our goals will change as well. And that's part of my role to sort of work with the players in that respect. And this is the thing. I mean, things aren't left to chance, are they? It's no fluke that our team's been so successful mm. uh, in terms of uh, the work they do on the greens, but the happiness that they have in life is going to uh, it's going to show up on the greens as well. Yeah, exactly. And an element of that too is is also keeping our um, significant others in the loop as well. You know, the families and the friends that form that support network of our players too. You know, that was part of some of the information that we're sending out to our players over this COVID-19 um, period is that some of that information was going to our family members too, because they're part of this. They're part of our broader team. And we feel from a, a I guess, a management, a staff side of things that it's important that they're, they're part of the mix as well. And, you know, in this challenging time a lot of our players are at home now with our fam with the families you know and there's a different dynamic that they've got to try and maneuver I know I've tried to maneuver it with my family and it was quite different you know so um but yeah again they're part of our our support network well, there you have it. It's Bowls Australia's Athlete Wellbeing and Engagement Manager. Get my head around that title again. Oh, no, it's a long title. <laughs> um, but look, just from listening to you speak just for a few minutes, there's, there's no doubt the, uh, the team's in good hands, Megan. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.